welcome in to, to Your Health. And I promised you that we would bring Dr. Will Rutland back to you, and he's here, and we've identified problems. We all know we've got problems, Dr. Rutland. And now we want to talk a little bit about what we do. Sure. And the first question I want to ask you, going back to what we talked about sure. real quickly, you said, and I've had many friends ask mm -hmm. this, what is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? They're all part of the same disease, but they have different symptoms. Sure. Yeah, it's a really good question. I get asked this occasionally, and um, you know, there are some clinical features. So the symptoms themselves are really what distinguish one form of dementia okay. from the other. So I know um, when we spoke previously, we talked a little bit about Alzheimer's and how there's sort of a gradual decline. And you can sort of see this deficit in right. everyday stuff, you know, right. sort of short-term memory, but that long-term memory can be preserved. And then over time, you know, you see that start to erode. And that's a really characteristic feature. You know, there will be similarities between different cases. So you may have heard of people getting lost or wandering. Right. Right. That's not unusual with Alzheimer's, um, although it's not specific only to Alzheimer's. There are other forms of dementia. So for instance, I, I may have talked about something called cerebrovascular dementia or vascular dementia. That's really where the blood supply to the brain has been compromised in some way. And the characteristic sort of feature of that type of dementia is what we call a stepwise decline. So rather than this gradual curve, like you might see with Alzheimer's, sort of are here at your functional baseline and then there's a drop off and all of a sudden you've forgotten how to do something you know you, you can't function in the same way you used to but then you'll stay there for a while and then you'll drop off again and then something else will happen okay, some more so severe it's, drops that's exactly right it's more of a behavior. stepwise that's right almost like a stair step gotcha um there are other things um, you know there's frontotemporal dementia y'all might remember that that sort of came to the fore when robin williams passed away right. there was some thought that he maybe had frontotemporal dementia that often comes with behavioral things, so folks will start to act in ways they wouldn't normally behave. Um, Parkinson's, of course, can progress into dementia. So you'll start with sort of the, the musculoskeletal things, you know, sort of the stiffness and, and kind of the, the physical symptoms of Parkinson's, but then it, as it progresses, it can turn into Well, dementia. when we're talking about this, if I were sitting out there watching this, sure. I would have in my mind the question, well, how do I get help? That's a I great mean, question. Do, do I have to have a family physician mm. refer me? How do I get to you? That's a great question. You know, um, with dementia in particular, oftentimes your family physician is going to pick up on it first. So our primary care docs are doing their best to catch everything that they possibly can. And their first move is often to deal with as much of it as they can in their clinic space, because that's where you're comfortable. That's where you have that relationship. Right. And then once it progresses to a point that they think, okay, right. this is now outside the boundaries of, of my primary care setting, they'll refer you either to a geriatrician or to a neurologist. And we have some phenomenal neurologists here in Montgomery. In fact, um, I'm going to take a second just to plug one of my favorite folks in the entire world, my favorite families in the entire world. Um, Larry Epperson and his daughter, right. Jessica Epperson, right. of course, she's Jessica McLemore now, right. uh, just graduated with me from the Montgomery campus here, right. and they are two of the finest doctors on the face of the planet. So for sure, there are neurologists around our region that can be helpful. Good to know. Um, so definitely uh, start with primary care, head to neurology. Oftentimes, they'll call somebody like me in to deal with kind of the psychiatric and psychological piece of dementia. Um, and so you guys can always find me over at Gardenia Cove. You know, I practice out <laughs> in East Montgomery across from sort of the AUM campus. Um, and we are happy to be helpful in any way that we can too, both for the patient themselves and for their caregivers. And normally insurance would, would cover this, I'm assuming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, folks can come directly in. Um, a lot of insurances will cover sort of a, a direct walk in to mental health care or to neurological care. Um, that's gotten better over time. That hasn't always been true, true, but it is getting better. There is more what we call parity between medical conditions and psychiatric conditions these days. Um, but again, the primary care physician can be a wonderful quarterback. So, you know, once you get into that primary care center, they can make a referral. We do that all the time. Now you mentioned, because you're just a positive kind of person, <laughs> but you said we've identified these problems. That's right. But you know what? There are some solutions. Boy, are there. My um, goodness. Uh, there <laughs> so are let's solutions. talk about that. Yes. Um, so this is the exciting piece. You know, it, it can feel almost overwhelming sometimes to think about everything we're facing these days. But I promise there are solutions, and we are capturing them more and more every day. Um, and they run the gamut. You know, stuff like... Um, 
this, the work we're doing at Gardenia Cove, the work that Larry and Jessica are doing at their office, we are always pushing the boundaries on providing as much care in the most expert fashion to our communities as we possibly can. And so we are here to help, no doubt about it. And you know, the science is progressing every day. We're finding new ways to intervene that can be more and more helpful. Um, a lot of the research work I did up at Yale was about how do we develop new drugs? How do we develop people get better? or develop ways for people to get better, and that is happening. Um, but it's not enough. Oh, no, I'm gonna slip back a little bit into the problem. Um, I know you know this, Virginia, but here in Alabama, we are facing longer odds even than the rest of the country. Oh, no. um, and, and that's you know, a byproduct of just being a rural place. We often don't have the infrastructure that we need. So nearly all 67 of our counties are mental health professional shortage areas. So we only treat about 75%, or excuse me, we only treat about 25% of the mental health burden in the state. 75% goes untreated. So even though folks like uh, our team over at Gardenia are doing everything we can to help our communities, it isn't enough. We need more. And we have some partners, you know, so they're working on this too. So for instance, you may have heard of Karastar. That's our mental health authority here in the River Region. They are opening a new crisis center over on Carmichael, I believe, okay. and it's going to be a beautiful facility and helpful to folks. Um, but then probably the most exciting initiative, and what I am so excited to talk about today, is we are going to start cultivating our own mental health expertise right here in Montgomery. Wonderful. Yes. So we're going to build a solution. Well, we and our partners, and we need our community behind us um, because this is going to be um, as if not complex, at least a labor-intensive task. Um, but the UAB Medical Campus is at the front end of developing a psychiatry residency. Oh, wonderful. And so this is a way for us in our own community to train and make sure that our, uh, our community members, our neighbors, our families have exactly the care that they need in the place that they live. We'll come back next Sunday and we'll get more in depth Sounds about good. some of the things that can be done and talk about a couple of other behavioral aspects. And thank you so much for being with us and we're on the right track. <laughs> and we'll be right back.